The President's Daily Briefing is the most exclusive publication in the world, and our job as agency officers is to collect intelligence that matters and get it to the policymakers so they can make informed decisions about our national security. Now, we do this through a number of publications. We're looking at the most exclusive publication right now. This has an interesting history. It goes back to Truman's day. It was Truman who asked for a briefing that he could carry with him. It was called the Daily Summary, and he asked for it in 1946. And then he wanted a weekly summary, and so we did that for him too. We always tailor the briefings for the first customer. The president decides who else will receive the briefing in addition to him, and that changes from administration to administration. President Kennedy wasn't happy with the essay format. He wanted a checklist of the most critical national security intelligence that we had at the time. So we created the President's Intelligence Checklist, or the PICL, P-I-C-L. President Ford was the first president to get regular one-on-one -on -one briefings from CIA, and the president always travels with his CIA briefer. Traveling with the president on 9-11, they're in the classroom with President Bush when he received the phone call that the towers had been hit on Air Force One for the next 13 hours until the president came back to Andrews was the CIA briefer. In 2004, we have the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act. That piece of legislation is the first sweeping changes to the intelligence community. As a result of that, the position of Director of National Intelligence is created, and the PDB staff has now moved up to the DNI level. CIA still contributes over 90% of the briefing, but now other members of the intelligence community also contribute to the briefing. Today, President Obama receives his briefing on a tablet.